Over the years, Mary Martin has flown to Never Never Land as Peter Pan. She's washed her hair at least a thousand times as nurse Nellie Forbush and gone from a nun to a mother of seven as Maria von Trapp, which didn't leave her much time to be a mother to her own son, Larry Hagman. And it has caused a tension between them that has melted over the years into a close relationship, uh, close enough to sustain a little honesty and gentle teasing. We saw that when we visited them recently at Larry's Beach House in Malibu. Mary, you were married at a very young age and became a mother as a teenager. Yes. And True. You, you wrote in your book, My Heart Belongs, that you for a time blamed your mother with, with uh, not preventing that early marriage. Do you oh. understand her position? Oh, utterly and completely. And as I wrote the book uh, three years ago, it's been out three years now, I would, I would know that my, I found that my mother was not to blame. It was purely my, uh, my own doing. And, but I, how wonderful that I did do this because then I wouldn't have this fantastic yeah, well, that's true. May I say, I, I'm very grateful, Mother. It's very <laughs> kind of you. <laughs> you would. Boy, was that you the greatest would. mistake you ever made. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was the nicest thing I could have ever done. Let me ask you, Larry, do you understand your mother better now than you did when, let's say, when you were a teenager? I think she's matured a lot since she was 17. When she, had <laughs> she really has, yes. Yeah, Not grown. a lot, Larry. Well, well, enough. Another thing I wondered about, here you are, a very successful actor with no evidence of having been overshadowed by a mother who had achieved superstar status. How did you escape that? Strength. Kind of tough to... Strength. <laughs> just being strong and just bullying your way through. He got larger and larger. He was a rather large baby. <laughs> and uh, and then he was a rather large young man. And now he's he's so strong that he You became is independent, independent early. Independent. Very early. Yes, yes. <laughs> Independently large. <laughs> you were also close to your grandmother, Mary's mother. Yes, indeed. And until you were uh, 12. Did the influence of an older uh, ancestor help shape your perspective on life, do you think? Yes, it made me kind, in, gentle, in what? sexy, all those things. Yeah. So you, you attribute that to your grandmother. Yeah, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. how nice. Taught me everything. Well, I never lived with mother, you know, until I was like 12 years old. I mean, mm -hmm. I would visit her on occasional weekends and so forth, and I'd have to have manners and then... You know, because my grandmother taught me manners so that when she, I... She taught us both manners. Well, I know, but so when I went to just to, to spend a weekend with you, I would know the right things to mm -hmm. do. And the, so she helped me a lot, and um, I've never used it since, by the way. <laughs> that, that was an abrupt change, though, for you, because when you, when you uh, then, when you lost the relationship with your grandmother because of the loss of mm -hmm. her, you came to into a home that was rather centered around uh, around your theatrical activities. It was hell. And was that rough on you? Tell you it was but hell. You, but you know what happens is when I was writing the book. By the way, my son has never read my book. I will. I yeah. watch you're gone, mother. I, I have to gone. pop off before he'll ever read it. But anyway, I read. I had to. It took me a long time to write that too in that particular period of our lives because it was so difficult. It was difficult for me, it was difficult for Larry, terribly difficult, and difficult for my Richard, my husband. Yes. And the thing was that it, I, I wrote it I don't know how many times and finally uh, I wrote it one night before I turned the, the book in, I completely started over at that section and it was that he had been the star as a little boy in my my mother bringing him up yes. then he came into a family where i had i was working all the time and he he was lost and this was tough i marvel that you wound up friends that might have been a oh. permanent trauma but it apparently oh we've had a rocky road oh I'm not... golly we didn't talk for five no, six three years, years three well it seemed like six years to me too and, and uh, richard halliday had wanted to adopt you and yes you but were he very wanted young. his father's name and he he never used Faded Larry's depending. name is a uh, middle name is Martin Larry Martin uh, Hagman right. and we wanted him if he when he went in the theater if he wanted to use Martin you know he said sure. no I want my father's name and they had a wonderful relation I just wonder wonderful. is that independent that spirit of independence which is found in some people and not in others is that inherited or is that something you feel that maybe uh, your grandmother and your mother and uh, your no father? I originated it myself oh that's not yes, true. it's true mother it isn't Larry it is <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, he, you know, we all are stubborn Texans, you know? i got to tell you something. This is the first time these two have been together on a talk show. Yeah. Which is, a, which is a, another I've been first finding time. out she's been lying all these years. Now. i, I got to read her book. I really do. Don't bother. Okay. Not you should. Yet. It's a good book. And I want to give a little quote from it here. Because you, you wrote at one place in the book, Mary, you said, I often have felt that I cheated my children a little. I was never so totally theirs as most mothers are. 
I gave to audiences what belonged to my children and got back from audiences the love my children longed to give me. That's, yeah, that's a remarkably candid... Uh, that's pretty good, Mom. ...confession. Well, that's and, uh, I'll be darned. That's wonderful. But it, did, it didn't there. turn out badly because your children are very no, close to you. No, because now we all, we all have this fantastic, fun life together. And see, I, and I've been in the theater now this year, 40 years, and Larry was five years old when I was on the stage in New York and uh, in Leave It To Me. And it what, this was the way it was. And then he's had his career and a wonderful, he, yeah. he's having a wonderful career, but he has something for his children that I never did have because mine was so concentrated in the theater, but he brings his children from the beginning up with him. And it was never away from me. That's true. Uh, I, I guess I learned from you that you really have to be with your children. Yeah. And, and whenever I'd go on location, I'd take the whole family with me. Because in, you know, in our sure. business, especially in films, you could be in Acapulco for six months or Russia or someplace, and if your family's not with you, you just you don't see them and it breaks yeah, up the thing. So I've been overly close, maybe. And, uh, He's a fabulous my... father. That's really good. Yeah, that's You've got to ask the children. I don't know, but they seem to, to like it. But I, I can see how I've compensated from the lessons I've learned with her. Now, my children probably abandoned theirs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, you no never way. Know, but, you know, but you did that with your children from uh, Richard but, Halliday. Yes, with, with, with Heller. Larry, you see, Larry wanted to be with us, but he could never really work it out for until he was older and right. then his sister is 10 years younger so she was with us in the theater at all times heller was with us always larry wouldn't go to london with us when i did uh, um, south pacific no not south pacific pacific 1860 yeah uh the, the show that noel coward wrote for me because he couldn't wear his boots in the savoy hotel we said, you can't wear your boots, and say, I won't go. He cowboy go. boots. I wanted to be a cowboy. And what did I end up? And look up? at you, a cowboy. I ended up a cowboy. You've always dressed a as you cowboy. want to be. Yeah. That's right. And now I'm having to reap the world with it, so to speak. <laughs> You have to be careful what you'd want and dream, you know, because yeah, you'll you like, you get it, you know. That's true. <laughs> well, your approach to motherhood, very, very different from by the time that you uh, well, yes. had Helen. Well, see, I was 16, yeah, and when he was born, end. and when I was 17, and my mother raised us together. My mother raised Larry and me. I'd never seen a baby unless they were nine months old, and so he was awfully large. He terrified me, you know. And with that small age difference, you also wrote in the book that you had felt at a time that you were a little more like brother and sister well, than mother and son. We were. A lot but, now. Is that think. feeling... Uh, oh, we ain't that far it? apart. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> she gets younger and I get older. <laughs> That's the way it works. <laughs> oh, that is no. a, I swear a it remarkable is. relationship. But it is a wonderful thing. And it just, I want to say to anybody seeing this program that you can have a difficult time with your children and your sons, particularly, I think, mothers and sons, but it can work out. Yeah, it's not necessarily disastrous. It is right? not it's necessarily. not terminal. No. no. We, we, right. have, we have, don't you think we have more fun now than we ever had in our lives? Well, we gossip a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we do, though, have a good time. You do. You apparently he do. He accepts I... me, and I accept him. It, you it, see, it... that's what ha you have to learn to do. You have to um, say, all right, you can't make mold every single person. Uh, the way you want it to be. Yeah. My mother couldn't mold me, you know, so she tried to mold Larry, and uh, she did not succeed. Everybody <laughs> maintained independence. She, 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 whenever mother, she says, you need to cut your hair. I say, okay. You know? You mean when Take I... Take your think, glasses off. I say, okay. It's just easier if you go along with it. It doesn't hurt me. The anymore. only time that he said this and he regretted it is he, he was letting his hair grow before people let it, their hair grow. And he was very young. We were on our way to London, and he, he said, uh, I said, your hair has to be cut. He said, okay, so I took, remember, I took the shears and right, just sheared well. it all off. And he wanted to shoot me because, you know, <laughs> it was all really like Neil Brenner almost. Pompadour. <laughs> old pompadour, I remember. Yeah, right, the pompadour. I remember, oh gosh, I had a great But he pompadour. still lets me cut his hair. You know, we, we've got so much to cover, Both and what I'd like to do yes. is just come back tomorrow on the program. Oh. We'll continue right now, but on tomorrow's over easy, if you guys will return, sure. and, uh, we'll take up from where we left off. I would love that. It's, it's real fun. This is such a marvelous Isn't setting. Isn't this his, his home? Doing it here. Yeah, this is Larry's uh, home, and we'll be back, we'll be back tomorrow with more. Mary Mountain, Larry Hagman.
fierce independence and very real friendship is something we are going to explore on tomorrow's Over Easy on an, in an extension of that interview, during which Larry will be seen in still another hat. He loves hats. Today on Over Easy, we talked with musical comedy star Mary Martin and actor Larry Hagman about their relationship as mother and son, one that has grown close and affectionate after many troubled years. Well, now the relationship is closer than it's ever been. And today we're going to see the second half of that interview, filmed at Larry's Beach House in Malibu. And as you're about to see, Larry is an actor who literally wears many hats. <laughs> well, boys and girls, back in Malibu with another of Mary Martin's sons, also <laughs> named Larry Hagman, who this time has on an Indian headdress. He's, I, this is when I call him Chief Sitting Pretty. Chief Sitting Pretty. Yeah, Chief Sitting Pretty. There's old Chief Sitting Pretty there. He, he, you know why he does this. He just he wants to outdo me. I like hats too. You know, we we all have a crazy thing in our in our family. We're, the, we're all slightly, you know. The fact that you guys can can <laughs> indulge the badinage you do shows uh, kind of togetherness that's not always found between mother and son. You you, get, a, you really time, get along well. Look, okay. No, you got, oh, I, I you got your own. <laughs> Not Boy, that's you. pretty dull, Mother. I'll no. tell you that right now. I feel a little underdressed no, here. Understatement. Red, white, and blue. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. And there's the flag. You can flag. sing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> you can sing it, Mother. I can't sing yeah. it. Let's talk about your careers, respectively, for a moment, which may be at an end now if anybody <laughs> tunes in and sees you. <laughs> but you've, you've had enormous success in, in media, as they say. What have you enjoyed most doing, from, from Anson Palver to... Harry and Tato, or A Dream of Genie, or any of the things, or what you're currently engaged in. Well, in, in, in Dallas, I'm, I'm enjoying that. It's a tremendous different role for me to play. I tell you, I, I generally like everything I do. Everything. Did you I know that he was in moment. Superman? I didn't know he was in it. Yeah, I was in Superman. I have two lines, I get two laughs. No, three lines and three Three lines laughs. and three laughs. Well, thank you, Mother. <laughs> you got, if you go see Superman, he'll read your book, I think. Is the, I've received it, but I didn't well, know he was seen. in it. But, you Didn't know, you that, tell her? You're no, really... he never tells me what, what his career is doing. And, it, and he's absolutely fantastic in, in Dallas. Do you know that Dallas. in London, it's showing in London. I'm, it is. A, a go ahead, brother. Go ahead. And, and, and I had a letter from friends there yesterday, and they said, absolutely, everything stops in London when Dallas is on because he's, and he's so mean. He's a, he's a villain. Yeah, yeah. But he's an awful he does it tongue tongue and cheek villain. Do you have preference in roles? Like, would you rather rather be a villain or a non-villain? Or well, I tell you, villains are, are kind of fun because they give you a range to do. When you're a nice guy all the time, generally you get to kiss the girl and you know you ride off into the desert. But a villain has, you know, you can shade your your performance. You and, can and kiss the girl and still ride off into the desert this way. Yeah. You've never done anything except super swell people. I mean, from Peter Pan to... Yeah, I, I can't think of anything you did that was... The uh, most fun I had, really, when I did Dolly, because I just adore doing Hello, yeah, Dolly, because that was a kind of a con lady. Sure. And then also Annie, you know, uh, she, a hillbilly. But those were not written for me. The ones that have been written for me are sweet people, and uh, and, and I people. like that, too. I, I like, like he does. I like all sides. I don't think... He, I don't know whether I could ever play somebody really... Uh, vicious. I don't think I could. Because I you, love people too much, I'd cry if I had to hurt. Well, you're, you're such a nice person. Would you <laughs> Would you do another stage thing? Like, do you do somersaults? Or, oh yes, or, and I the one I really would adore when when we ever get the the proper property is to do something with him and our that'd be great, his man. daughter, my granddaughter Heidi. Right. The three of us, you know. She's now going into is into that a the business feasible thing? You're. Anything possible in the theater business. It but sure also, is. the thing is, is if you w we want to do something where we'd all have a, a wonderful, fun time together in and a, a play. Piece of the action. <laughs> <laughs> all Mr. All commercial. All <laughs> best business woman in the world. Not a, not a bad idea. Not really. No, you were you 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 wrote in your book that that mostly things details of that kind like business were were handled throughout your life. Either Still by a handled husband. throughout my life. But my Richard handled everything that now my. My lawyer does, you know. I really don't know anything about business. Yeah, you said once that you had, hadn't even written a check until no. after the death of your husband. No, and then I learned how, unfortunately. Boy, did she! <laughs> unfortunately, learned how to do a check. But now I don't do that so much anymore because I don't really want to be a part of that. I like yeah. to spend it, lots of money. But you don't like keeping track of the figures. I don't want to know what you mean. You, the, the ranch in Brazil is yes, still... Uh, still have it there. I was there last August, uh, two and a half months. I go back every year. 
and it's a, it's a wonderful farm. It's a self-supporting farm when I'm not in residence. When I'm in residence, well, it's, it's not self-supporting. Not so, so self-supporting. <laughs> so you stay away. Yeah. Well, how about writing? Would you would you write anymore now after you? Well, I've I've actually written now two books: one on needlepoint and one on my life. Well, and right, up to the point of uh, five years ago, the it came up to that period of my life. I don't know how. Someone said the. Uh, I was going to live till I was 92, which all the children will collapse if I tell them that. Tell her and grand I have five grandchildren now. That's right. And uh, so if I live to 92, maybe I could write another book. I could write about my you life. Do a more update of the biography, but there are other things you could write about. And yeah, the, and the craft of acting and the no, I love inside it. theater. And... And, but right now I'm having fun designing, and I'm designing things for uh, field crest, you know, sheets, yeah. towels, and what have you. And my next collection will be from Brazil. All the things that I had down in taking from Brazilian uh, designs. Think, folk I, that's team. why I was there, two and a half months, okay. making things up, ideas up to. Did this be spring done. out of the needlepoint work? Or yes, was, yes, I it did. I understand your wife does needlepoint. She's very interested in needlepoint. Yes, ah, that's right. She was, she was interested in your. Uh, well, she your may work be designing your... sheets and towels and things. That may be the next step. It, it I don't led, know. you know, it led from one thing to another. And you still travel uh, an awful lot. Oh, yes, a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm home very little. Do you when I'm home, I'm, I'm here, or there at my house. With uh, Larry, right. We had a fabulous Christmas, 21 at my house for Christmas dinner. That's... And, and uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful That's day. That's above and beyond the call, I think, uh, 21 oh, at your but house. It was a, I, lo I love this period of my life probably more than I deserve, but I just adore it. It's being wonderful. Is it at the best now? Do you feel that... Uh, well, it's, it certainly is, uh, yes. It, uh, no, I adore performing, too. I love it. But this is a, this is a, as I say in my book, it's a second chance to have a life because with my family. Because now you, have the t you, or you take the time I take with the time. your family. Which well, I, didn't. you know, I, the other was the way it had to be. I mean, that was, I had to be that dedicated. There's no other way to do it. Yes, you can't do three and a half years in one show, same, you know, and never be out unless you're that dedicated. You there said once, no uh, again, and uh, I think it was in your book, you said that the, the way you repaid the people mm -hmm. who had loved you mm -hmm. was by being what you had to be. Yes. Do you feel the same way about your children and, let's say, grandchildren also, that that would be a way for them to repay love you've given them? I think they are giving me an awful lot back that I do not deserve, but, but uh, we all are... I, I think that they will have to be this dedicated. My, my, my uh, Heidi, his, to be what his, they want to be. his daughter is learning this. Yes. Larry is learning. I mean, he has. He he's a very dedicated uh, person in his in his career. Well, he, he's very serious about his career. You have to be. <laughs> well, there you you on the surface you're, you. But he. Yeah, but you have fun, you, you can have be serious Larry. about it without being sure. uh, taking yourself you don't have too seriously. to be serious. morose. But yeah. you oh, never be, you morose. Know, have but fun you have and be serious at the same time. And you have to have discipline, which you know. Well, yeah. When you get up four thirty, five thirty every morning, sure you have that discipline. You have to you know you have to go to bed at eight thirty, nine o'clock. You know all the the glamour of the film industry is is just not there. And you see, mine was a theater, and I had to be. Uh, I, I was up until one and two every morning. And then, therefore, the mornings had to be quiet. Well, I, yeah, when I I couldn't, uh, I didn't see mother until uh, before dinner. Yeah. And by that time, we had a light dinner, and she was off to the theater, and that was it. And and and, and then the next day, the same. And way. the next day, and there was, there was no, we never saw each other except on weekends, is, and then she was exhausted because you did the shows on Saturday and Sunday was just but laid you see, out. But when he got in the theater, then he found out why this was. Well, I, yeah, but see, I had a little different thing. I, my my wife kept the kids up, would wake them up like at 10 o'clock, and I would play them with them from 11 till 2 or 3 in the morning. And so, that, but that was before they had to go to school, of course, when they had and to go to school. then you got a different schedule. Well, sure. By the way, his wife, my, M-A-J, is, when I say my daughter-in-law, my, yeah. it's a little confusing, she's Swedish, but I love her so dearly that I've said to my idiot child over here, if anything ever happened between the two of you, I get custody of my. <laughs> She's a wonderful, wonderful mother, wonderful mother. That's true, yes, isn't it? Of course it's true, and you're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to put on another hat, sweetie? What really gets to me about this family is the fierce spirit of independence that has, you, you're close-knit, <laughs> but you sure are independent of each other, which I think is an admirable trait. Yeah, so far. And maybe that holds, maybe that makes some of the mortar. What are you, what are you going to do now? After me? The, yeah, you're going to go on designing. Yes, but, I have that, that's the next and, thing, uh, still. And uh, if I if I really did find a play, I do not really want to do musicals 
big musicals because the it, they cost so much, a million, over a million, you know. Right. Then you, I would never leave a play unless it was completely paid off, a musical, sure. unless it was paid off and yeah. made money. So I don't want to be that tied up. I can understand that. Uh, I would love to do a play with some music if I could find the one that's fun. Get that one going with the three of you. Why you know, you that's you Larry? You oh, write very well. writers are different kind of people. I'm, I'm a butterfly. Good luck to you on Dallas and, you. and other ventures. And Mary is really marvelous. I love seeing you. Visiting with you again. Thank you for being on Over Easy. Wonderful. Mary Martin and Larry Hagman. Swears he is sometime going to read his mother's book, My Heart Belongs, which she brought out in 19...